This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the simplest and best website builder. How exactly did the Western Roman army dissolve in the course of the 5th century AD? How did the most impressive and massive army of antiquity get obliterated during the course of about a century? And when and where were the last Roman legions in the West recorded? Can we maybe even reconstruct when and how they were disbanded or destroyed? Let us try to uncover the slow, almost 100 year lasting dissolution of the Western Roman army. The slow death of the Western Roman Empire began already before the fateful event of New Year's Eve in 406, when large bands of Germanic tribes began crossing the river Rhine in ever greater numbers, thus managing to overrun Gallia and Hispania in the following years, which set the catastrophic chain reaction into motion which would ultimately end with the dissolution of the Western Roman state. It began already with the civil wars of the late 4th century. We know that the Roman Empire was basically in a state of perpetual civil war. The Romans never really managed to solve their succession problem and so there were countless emperors, counter emperors and usurpers proclaimed which fought each other almost all the time. There is literally not a single century in the history of the Roman Empire without some form of civil war. Of course not counting the very ending phase of the Eastern Roman Empire. But as the problems for the empire mounted, so did the frequency of the civil wars. It became basically common practice. The civil wars that broke the neck of the Western Roman Empire were the battles in which the Western Roman usurper Magnus Maximus was defeated in 388 by Theodosius and the battle of the Frigidus river in 394, where the Western Roman Emperor Eugenius and his Magister Militum Arbogast were defeated again by Theodosius. In those two wars the West lost to the East and so large numbers of Western Roman legions were destroyed. We know that Eugenius and Arbogast had to withdraw Limitane troops from the Rhine frontier even before the battle of the Frigidus in order to have enough troops against Theodosius. And we also know that later Stilicho had to again deplete the Rhine frontier of troops in order to be able to defend Italy against the incursions of Radagaisus and Alaric in the early 400s. So this is already a strong indication that the troops that were destroyed in 388 and 394 were never replenished. We have discussed in detail the reasons why the late Romans were not so super motivated to fight for the empire anymore in this video here. Basically the quality of the coinage and reduced perks for serving in the army played a large role, but in a future video I will also analyze in detail the other reasons why the late Romans were not very motivated anymore to fight for the empire. So we see that already before the disaster of 406 AD, the Western Roman army was weakened by the civil wars against the Eastern Roman army. The single best source that we have which details the state of the Western Roman army after the breach of the Rhine frontier in late 406 or early 407 AD is the Notitia Dignitatum. This is an extremely remarkable document which luckily survived in form of four medieval copies of the earlier Roman originals. It describes the civil and military organization of the Eastern and the Western Roman Empire in great detail. Fascinatingly, it is assumed that the part describing the East was written around 395 AD, whereas the part describing the West dates from the mid 420s. Thus, this document is invaluable in assessing how the state of the Western army was during that time. The 420s were a time where the Western Roman Empire might have recovered due to the efficient and able Magister Militum Constantius III, who was for a short while also Western Roman Emperor in 421. He was able to stabilize the empire so far that if the later civil wars had not happened, the Western Empire might actually have survived. But alas he was short lived and died in 421 and so the Western Roman armies continued to dissolve. From the Nutitia we can derive the units of the Western Roman Comitatenses and Limitanei that were stationed throughout the West. However, we must be very careful with the Nutitia Dignitatum because it is not always very precise, it sometimes omits things 
has errors from wrong medieval translations and doesn't even give exact unit numbers. So for instance, we cannot deduce how many people served in the Western Roman Comitatensis and Limitane in 425 versus, for example, 385. We can merely make some good educated guesses. Unfortunately, modern technology, which allows us to easily store information forever using digital devices, did not exist back in the Roman Empire. There was no camera, video or the internet. We however are lucky enough to have those tools and so we can use the power of the internet to create the most amazing websites. And there is no better and more intuitive website builder than Squarespace. Squarespace is hands down the easiest to use website builder that I have ever seen in my entire life. There is no need to know coding, then search engine optimization is already integrated and you have the most powerful analytics tools at your disposal so that you know exactly the traffic sources, most read content, audience geography and more. With just a few clicks and by dragging and dropping you can create the most impressive websites and they are already super optimized from the get-go. No matter if you want to create a history blog, of course about Roman history that's clear, or an online shop for selling Rome merch, seriously there is no better way than with Squarespace because you have all the necessary tools already integrated. I'm thinking myself about sooner or later starting a blog about late Roman history and when the time comes you can be absolutely sure that I will use Squarespace. So don't hesitate and go to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Majorianus to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Oh and by doing that you don't only create a super awesome website of your own, but you also support this channel and help to end misconceptions about the late Romans. Thank you so much friend of late Roman history. So back to the Notitia Dignitatum. If we take the Notitia at face value, we might be tricked into believing that everything was well and nice in the 420s, that the western army had even grown. An incredible 181 units are mentioned for the west and only 157 for the east. So what, the Notitia tells us that the west had more troops in 425 AD than the east had in 395? Well, we must be careful. As I said, the Notitia doesn't give us the strength of these units. Before the civil wars of the late 4th century, many historians assume a total strength of the entire eastern and western armies to have been around 500,000 men. The Notitia tells us that 97 of the western units were created around 400 AD and that only 84 were from before 395 AD. Wow, that is impressive, so the western Roman Empire managed to recruit over 50% of the army after 400 AD? That is why I said that we must be careful. In reality, those 97 new Comitatensis units were created from Limitane border troops. So Limitane were just being rebranded as Comitatensis. Now sure, some of them were indeed new recruits, of course mostly Germanic recruits from border tribes, but the majority of the Limitane that had been rebranded to now be the more prestigious Comitatensis were, as you no doubt have correctly guessed, never restored. Why? because the western roman state's tax revenue was declining as we have discussed in multiple videos, because large territories had now been effectively occupied by foreign invaders, thus recruiting new troops became more and more difficult, especially after Africa fell to the Vandals, thus extinguishing this important source of tax revenue. So we can assume that already when the Notitia Dignitatum was written for the west, so around the year 425, that in reality the strength of the western army was only half of what it had been some 40 years earlier, so probably already far less than 250,000 men. Ok, but how then exactly did the western army dissolve from the mid 420s until the last roman stronghold, the realm of Suagrius, fell about 60 years later? Well, this is really complicated because after the Notitia Dignitatum of the West, so after 425, there are very few documents or inscriptions detailing which legion was stationed where exactly and when exactly. Luckily though, a few inscriptions or sources do exist here or there 
and in combination with the Notitia, we can reconstruct at least some things. The Legio 1 Adutrix, for instance, is mentioned the last time in 444 AD, having been stationed in Pannonia at Brigetio. Thus, it is quite likely that it was destroyed in the wars against the Huns in the early 450s. It is mentioned though once more in the time of Justinian, so 100 years later, but it is very unlikely that this was still a functioning legion, it was probably just the name that survived. The Legio II Italica was mentioned being stationed at Lauriacum in Noricum Ripense around the year 400, but we don't know what happened to it afterwards. However, fascinatingly, the Vita Sancti Severini describes that even in the 470s there were so-called Vigiles and Exploratores defending Lauriacum and other cities in the region as best as they could. These could be the last units of the Legio II Italica or descendants of that legion's troops upholding the tradition of that very legion. The Legio VI Victrix is mentioned in inscriptions in Britannia as late as the early 5th century at Eburacum, modern day York. Most of the legion was moved together with the majority of the Roman army to Gallia when Constantine III usurped in Britain and withdrew almost all Roman troops from the island. Descendants of the Legio VI Victrix might have kept up an organized military system in Britannia well into the later 5th century which might have been the basis for the author legend. Fascinatingly, the Notitia still sees Britain as part of the Roman Empire, even though there were no official Roman troops stationed there anymore by the mid-420s. The Legio VII Gemina is another legion of which we know that it was stationed in the early 400s at Castra Legionis, modern-day Leon in Spain. It was a Limitane legion that was likely overrun by the Suevi in 409. What happened to them afterwards is unknown. The Legio X Gemina is also known to have been stationed in the early 400s at Vindobona in Pannonia, under command of the Dux Pannoniae Primae et Noriki Ripensis. As with the other legions, we don't know what happened to them. The Legio XIV Gemina is another interesting legion that is mentioned in the Notitia. It was still stationed in the early 400s at Carnuntum in Pannonia. The Notitia mentions a comitatensis unit under the Magister Militum per Tracias in that region, and it is likely that it was indeed the 14 Gemina. It probably dissolved in the 430s when the Danube frontier collapsed under relentless waves of attacks by different barbarian tribes. And finally, the Legio 30 Ulpia Victrix is mentioned to have been stationed around the year 400 at Castra Vetera the military fort of the city of Colonia Ulpia Traiana, modern-day Xanten. This legion too was probably dissolved in some form or another after the collapse of the Rhine frontier in 407 and following years. As we can see, we cannot deduce with high accuracy what happened with all these western legions. By the way, the eastern legions are also mostly mentioned for the last times in the early 400s, with the notable exception of the Legio V Macedonica, which is mentioned in an inscription as late as 636 AD and which was probably disbanded in the Muslim invasions of the mid 600s. This is the last ever mentioned legion, but it doesn't mean that it is the last legion. Because as you can see, the sources are not super precise here. And since the Notitia Dignitatum for the West was written in the mid 420s, we simply don't know what happened to many of them afterwards. Some were probably killed in the battles against the Germanic invaders. Others were likely destroyed in the countless civil wars against other Roman legions that followed the invasions after 407. Others might have decided to join the barbarians and continue to fight as foederati. Again, others might have become independent militias, fighting to defend the last Roman strongholds, such as the ones mentioned in the Vita Sancti Severini. They might have still been active in a reduced form, or their descendants, defending local Roman forts or small cities as late as the 470s. Others might have simply dissolved because as the Roman state collapsed, there was no pay anymore. Others might have continued fighting as regular legions in Roman service under Aetius at the Battle of the Catalonian Plains. Some might have still even existed in the time of Majorian, helping to restore the Western Empire, 
which unfortunately failed as we know. Others might have still fought under Antemius and one of his sons Antemiolus and died fighting against the Visigoths. Others might have unsuccessfully fought against the Franks under Suagrius in 486 AD. The descendants of other legions might have still acted in the early 500s in the West, upholding the Roman military traditions in some form, maybe even wearing their shields and equipment. Some of these descendants might have still worn the battle standards of this or that legion, fighting even under Odoacer, Theoderic or other Germanic kings, while of course by that time not really being a Comitatenses or Limitane legion anymore. I am pretty sure that there would be so many incredible stories to tell, but since these were times of utter chaos and of the collapse of an entire civilization, the literary sources are very rare, so we simply don't know what happened to all those legions after the Notitia mentions them. However, we can certainly observe that this was a slow process and must have been extremely different from region to region. It certainly was a time of heroes and valiant defenders of Roman traditions, where some might have still fought in the West in Roman military fashion well into the 500s. But unfortunately, we might never know for sure. And please like this video and subscribe so that you won't miss any future videos on the fascinating era of the late Roman Empire. And please consider supporting my work on Patreon or via YouTube membership because the long-term sustainability of this channel really depends on your support. And I would especially like to thank our new Kaisar supporter, Gal Shane. Thank you so much, Gal Shane, for supporting this channel in such a generous way. This channel would not be possible without our amazing Patreon and YouTube members, and I want to thank each and everyone who is supporting this channel in any form. Gratias Tibiago Amiki. And if you want to learn more about why the late Romans were not super motivated to fight anymore for their empire, you can watch this video in the upper right corner. But if you are more interested in learning why the late Roman legions were not inferior to the early Roman legions, you can watch the other video in the lower right corner. I say thanks again to all friends of Roman history, Gratias Tibiago and Bene Valete.